From ancient times to the modern age, our history is replete with maritime disasters. From storms to collisions and human errors, countless lives have perished in the roaring waves. Despite our best efforts to build an unsinkable ship, these disasters serve as a clear reminder to mankind that the oceans can't be tamed. Welcome back to Nautical Depths, and today, we are unveiling some of the worst maritime disasters in history. Before we delve into the past, hit the subscribe button and become a member of our crew. With that being said, let's commence today's voyage. In the early days of April 27th, 1865, just a few days after the Civil War ended, the SS Sultana caught fire on the Mississippi River. It was a 260 foot long wooden steamboat made in Cincinnati in 1863 and it usually carried people and goods between St. Louis and New Orleans on the Mississippi River. On April 23, 1865, the boat stopped in Vicksburg to fix a problem with the boiler during a regular trip from New Orleans. While it was there, the U.S. government hired it to take former Union prisoners of war from Confederate prisons back up to the Northern Territory. To meet the contract, the Sultana's captain, J. Cass Mason, chose to patch up the leaky boiler instead of making more extensive and time-consuming repairs. Union Army Captain George Williams, overseeing the operation, worried that his colleagues were taking bribes to use other boats for the prisoners. In a rush, he ordered all former prisoners at the parole camp and hospital in Vicksburg to be sent on this boat. Even though it was meant for only 376 people, more than 2,000 Union troops were squeezed onto the steamboat, way more than it was allowed to carry. Despite concerns from several officers about overloading, Williams insisted they all travel on one boat. As the vessel moved north on the Mississippi, the severe overcrowding in a faster river current caused by the spring thaw stressed its newly patched boilers. Shortly after leaving Memphis, Tennessee on April 27th, the overworked boilers exploded, destroying the center of the boat and starting a fire that couldn't be controlled. Many who weren't immediately killed tried to swim to shore and perished. Out of the initial survivors, 200 later died from burns. Research shows that 1,195 out of the 2,200 passengers and crew lost their lives, making the Sultana incident the deadliest marine time disaster in U.S. history. On September 26, 2002, the MV Lajula, a ferry owned by the Senegalese government, flipped over in the waters off the Gambia. It caused a tragic incident where 1,863 lives were lost with only 64 survivors. This devastating event ranks as the second worst peacetime disaster in maritime history. The ferry was on its journey from Zeguincourt in the Casamance region to Dakar, the capital of Senegal. When it faced a severe storm, the ship, licensed for shallower waters, was carrying an overwhelming number of passengers, nearly four times its intended capacity of about 2,000 individuals. Approximately half of these passengers didn't even have tickets. The precarious situation was aggravated by many people sleeping on the deck, contributing to the instability of the vessel. Unfortunately, rescue operations were delayed by several hours. A subsequent government investigation identified negligence as the primary cause of the tragedy. In the late 1940s, as the Chinese Civil War approached its conclusion, the communist forces were gaining ground, prompting a mass exodus from the nationalist stronghold of Shanghai. Amidst the turmoil, the SS Kayangaya a Chinese passenger steamship played a pivotal role in transporting refugees. However, on December 4, 1948, the ship found itself overloaded, carrying several thousand more people than its official capacity of 2,150. Tragically, disaster struck at the mouth of the Huangpu River, approximately 50 miles south of Shanghai. The SS Kayangaya exploded, likely hitting a World War II era mine resulting in the deaths of nearly 4,000 people, while only around 1,000 passengers were fortunate enough to be rescued. Remarkably, the wreckage was cleared from the channel in 1956, and the ship's hull underwent 
refurbishment, eventually returning to service. In a lesser known account from his memoirs of the Second World War, Prime Minister Winston Churchill shares a distressing event that unfolded on June 17, 1940. The RMS Lancastria, a 20,000 ton liner that was taken over by the UK government for Operation Ariel, suffered a devastating fate. Loaded with around 5,000 men and tasked with evacuating British nationals and troops from France after the Dunkirk evacuation, the ship was bombed just before departure from the French port of Saint Nazaire. The ship exceeded its capacity, carried an estimated 5,000 to 7,000 people, surpassing the available life jackets and lifeboats. In a mere 20 minutes after being bombed, the liner sank, resulting in the loss of nearly 4,000 lives. Churchill, upon receiving the news, prevented its immediate publication, stating, the newspapers have got quite enough disaster for today, at least. Eyewitnesses recounted heartbreaking scenes with survivors rescued under continuous air attacks. The sinking, overshadowed by other wartime events, only received official commemorations decades later. The MV Doña Paz was a ferry for passengers made in Japan and owned by the Philippines. Originally named Himeyuri Maru, it could carry 608 passengers when it started in 1963. Sulpicio Lines bought it in 1975, changed its name to Don Sulpicio, and later to Don Yapaz, after a fire in June 1979. On December 20th, 1987, the ferry crashed into the oil tanker Vector while going from Leyte Island to Manila. In the Philippines, where there are so many islands, passenger ferries are quite common, but safety records can be weak. The Don Yapaz, often called Asia's Titanic, was overcrowded during the collision, carrying possibly more than twice its allowed capacity. According to some reports, 2,000 passengers weren't even on the official list. Apart from being way too crowded, some claim the ship had no radio and life jackets were locked away. Additionally, the vector was reported to be poorly maintained and operating without a license, a lookout, or a qualified master. The collision made the Doña Paz sink causing about 4,385 people to lose their lives, with only 26 survivors. This incident is known as the deadliest peacetime maritime disaster in history. On January 30th, 1945, about 9,000 people perished as a Soviet submarine attacked and sunk the German sea vessel Gustloff in the cold Baltic Sea, initially created as a cruise ship for the Nazis program called Strength Through Joy, the ship was named after a Nazi leader who was assassinated in 1936. The ship was set afloat by Adolf Hitler himself in 1937. Originally a cruise ship, it later served as a hospital and a U-boat training school during World War II. In January 1945, during the Soviet advance on East Prussia, the Nazis initiated Operation Hannibal a massive naval evacuation. The Gustloff, part of this operation, departed from Gotenhafen and was headed to Kiel, Germany. The Soviet submarine S-13 spotted it and launched three torpedoes, sinking the liner within 90 minutes. Near present-day Poland, approximately 1,000 of the 10,000 people on board survived, marking it as the deadliest maritime disaster in history. After the tragedy, the world knew little about it due to various reasons. The Nazi regime kept news of the sinking quiet, censoring survivors. Some survivors chose not to speak out, feeling guilty about their German heritage and the atrocities committed by Nazi Germany. These events highlight how a minor mistake or miscalculation can lead to serious consequences. These disasters serve as a stark reminder that the oceans do not forgive our greed, laziness, or mistakes. For more videos about maritime history and knowledge, subscribe to Nautical Depths and hit the bell icon to stay updated with new arrivals.